Welcome to worship for the fourth Sunday of the season of Easter at and with Trinity Lutheran Church in St. Petersburg, Florida. This service was being recorded just before and just after the verdict in the trial of Derek Chauvin was announced. According to this nation's justice system, a jury of his peers has decided that he is guilty of the murder of George Floyd. According to God's justice system, both George Floyd and Derek Chauvin are sinners in need of God's rescue. Jesus Christ was willing to lay down his life for the sake of both men. Both men have been invited to enjoy the abundant life that begins in the here and now and extends for all of eternity. God's infinite grace makes it possible for both men to do so, and we can leave it up to God to figure out how. As a reconciling in Christ congregation, Trinity sees all human beings as precious children of God. We welcome all people to make their faith journey with us regardless of the world's labels and regardless of anyone's beliefs about black lives or blue lives because all human lives matter deeply to God and to us. In this worship service, the Sacrament of Holy Communion will be offered to all. We invite you to prepare some bread and wine or juice that you can receive as the body and blood of Christ when you see it being shared here in the service. This congregation cannot survive without generous and even sacrificial contributions from its members and friends. Please use the QR code that you'll see on the screen to make a donation. You can also do it from our website by mailing a check to us or by dropping it off in person. The church office can even help you to set up automatic electronic payments, which will save you a lot of trouble. We will begin a Bible study on the first letter of John over Zoom this Thursday. You can participate at either 2 p.m. or at 7 p.m. This week, we wish a happy birthday to Don Dorr, Dee Holloway, Joan Page, and Yvonne Waters. And now we invite you to prepare your heart and your mind for an encounter with our risen Savior.
Alleluia, Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed, Alleluia. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church where we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts, shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God, now and forever. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, good shepherd of the sheep, you seek the lost and guide us into your fold. Feed us and we shall be satisfied. Heal us and we shall be whole. Make us one with you, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. One of the uncomfortable truths about Easter is that it can make people feel threatened and create conflict. In the Gospel of John, Jesus presents what is now the comforting image of the Good Shepherd during a confrontation with some of the religious authorities of his day. Today's reading from Acts describes a similar confrontation between the disciple Peter and a different set of religious authorities. The comforting images of the 23rd Psalm don't shy away from the conflicts and dangers of life lived in the presence of one's enemies and in the valley of the shadow of death. The first letter of John was written to a Christian community that had almost been destroyed by its internal conflicts about who Jesus was and what his resurrection meant. Those who were still in the congregation are encouraged to believe in Jesus, to entrust themselves to him, and to lay down their lives for one another. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The next day the rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among the mortals by which we must be saved. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of John. We know love by this, that Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God and we receive from him whatever we ask because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit that he has given us. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. The good news of God's love according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. After healing a man born blind, Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would not have sin. But now that you say, We see, your sin remains. Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved, and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it 
abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice, so there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We love pictures of Jesus holding a baby lamb in his arms. We're comforted by the idea of a shepherd who leaves 99 sheep to go in search of us. But when Jesus talks about being the good shepherd, it's more complicated than that. It's tangled up in politics and justice and sacrifice. Back in the time of Jesus, Good shepherd was a metaphor for a just and righteous leader. It referred to a king or a priest or a judge who protected and provided for the people they served, following the example of God's protection and provision. The 23rd Psalm is about God. But it's also a reminder that kings like David were supposed to act as shepherds, using their power for people rather than exploiting power over people. Jesus' identification of himself as the Good Shepherd happens when he is criticizing the religious leaders of Jerusalem. In their abuse and intimidation of a blind man whom Jesus had healed, they have acted like thieves and bandits who want to hurt the sheep, or like hired hands who don't care if the sheep live or die. And when in the book of Acts, Peter and John heal a lame man, they are the ones abused and intimidated by the authorities who had orchestrated the arrest and execution of Jesus. They're another group of leaders, too blind to see that Jesus held the divine power of life because he was the divine power of life. In the Hebrew Scriptures, God's name is presented as I Am. When Jesus says, I am the Good Shepherd, he's saying, I am God. The God who loves you like a Good Shepherd. The God who becomes a human man so that he can die for you and fill you with divine life. After the death and resurrection of Jesus, 
after he voluntarily lays down his life and then takes it up again, the Holy Spirit fills his disciples with the power of divine life and divine resurrection, and through them that life is offered to the rest of the world. The same power that raises Jesus from death to life and raises Jesus from earth to heaven, raises a lame man to his feet, and raises Peter from being someone who denies Jesus to being his boldest advocate. When Peter is filled with the Holy Spirit, he is empowered to speak the difficult truths that people don't want to hear. The religious authorities want to silence him and the other disciples, but Peter brings the whole confrontation into the light of day, saying in no uncertain terms, this is about Jesus, whom you crucified and God raised from the dead. Despite the world's best efforts to eliminate him, Jesus still heals people. Jesus still transforms people's lives. The power of the resurrection continues to disrupt the status quo even after Jesus has ascended back to heaven, especially when the status quo is what is harming the sheep of his pasture. Peter says that the name of Jesus is the only thing that offers salvation. The word salvation is about health and wholeness and abundant and meaningful life. When Peter talks of the lame man being healed, he uses the word saved just as he does when talking about the name of Jesus. Health, wholeness, and life are found in no one but Jesus, the crucified and resurrected Son of God. Salvation can't be gotten from wealth or from power, and certainly not from any attempts to silence the truth. And even though Jesus poses a threat to human plotting and to the abuse of power, nothing can stop God's kingdom from becoming our reality. Because God's love is stronger than human cruelty, stronger even than death and the grave. Sometimes a hymn can add new meaning to a familiar psalm. The king of love, my shepherd, is. Instead of, I shall not be in want, we get, I nothing lack. God doesn't just restore my soul, God ransoms it. But the most important addition to the hymn is the cross of Christ as our guide through death's dark veil. We aren't just comforted by the Good Shepherd's rod and staff, we are guided by his choice of self-sacrificing love. The 23rd Psalm says that God protects and provides for us for the sake of God's name. God does it because of who God is. Peter says that the name of Jesus is the only thing that offers salvation. The first letter of John says that belief in the name of Jesus means living your life as he lived his. It contrasts Christ laying down his life with Cain taking the life of his brother Abel. 
The letter claims that most of the world's people are children of the devil like Cain. The children of God, rather than killing their siblings in the human family, are those who would lay down their lives for them. It's like what Martin Luther says when talking about the fifth commandment. Thou shalt not kill. What does this mean? We are to fear and love God, so that we neither endanger nor harm the life of our neighbor, but instead help and support them in all of life's needs. If you aren't actively giving people life, you are killing them. Christians are to be sacrificially generous with our lives and with our livelihood. And that means more than just sharing our material wealth. How does God's love abide in anyone who has some of the world's wealth? or some of the world's opportunity, or has access to justice, or has a skin color that protects them from violence. If they see a brother or sister who could benefit from them and yet refuses to help. Laying down our lives involves sacrificing some of our comfort and privilege and self-isolation from harsh truths. Jesus gives us the power to lay these things down and to take them up again. The more we use the power and privilege that we possess to help someone else the more we can quiet our conscience if it asks, am I doing enough? Not, am I doing enough to earn God's love, but am I doing enough to make the kingdom of God a reality? The Holy Spirit empowers Peter to speak with boldness and confront the oppression that he sees. The first letter of John says that because we have the Spirit within us, we can speak to God with boldness, demanding that God provide us with everything we need in order to fight injustice and oppression in our world. The Good Shepherd voluntarily lays down his life and then takes it up again so that we can be empowered to live as Good Shepherds. We experience our abundant and eternal life when we make sacrifices that give life to others. Jesus came that every one of us might have life and have it abundantly. Because we have nothing to fear, we can live our life for others, which is the way we were created to live.
alive in the risen Christ who laid down his life and inspired by the Holy Spirit who calls us to live lives of service to our neighbor, we bring our prayers, needs, and concerns before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Loving shepherd, you know your own and your own know you. Your voice calls us to your loving embrace. Strengthen your church throughout the world that we may proclaim the good news of your ever expansive and inclusive love through the witness of our lives. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. Gracious shepherd, you are generous with the gifts of goodness and mercy. Restore your creation to wholeness so that cities and towns, countryside and wilderness may abound with life. May we come to know that through your grace, we are called to live lives that protect your creation and all living things. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. Hope giving shepherd, the nations and peoples are your heritage. Place into the hearts of all leaders and rulers the passion to serve. Crucify any desire to overpower others and give leaders joy in lifting up the lowly. Strength to fight oppression, compassion to provide for those who live in poverty, and the wisdom to understand how our own actions lead to the suffering of others. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. Abiding Shepherd, your love flows as we reach out to those around us. Move us with your spirit so that we may lay down our lives for those who experience oppression, racism, poverty, and all forms of social inequality. Help us to love one another in truth and action. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Saving Shepherd, you restore us to wholeness. Help our community in our life together and make us beacons of hope to our community and the world. Fill us anew with your Holy Spirit. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is, is great. great. Eternal Shepherd, you hold us securely in your loving hands. In the assurance of resurrection hope, we will remember our loved ones who have died in you. Bring us with them to dwell in your house forever. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise these and all our needs and concerns to you, O oh God, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our nation and our world are in desperate need of a peace that surpasses human understanding. The peace of Christ be with you all. Let's not just share words and signs of that peace, but share truth and action that expresses that peace to one another. Put 
Please join me in the offering prayer. God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us that we may see and know the presence of the risen Christ in this meal. And so that fed and nourished, we may be sent in service to a suffering world. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so, with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast 
grace our table with your presence. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth burning with justice, peace, and love. With your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one body, one human family, by the power of the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ invites us to this table. Come, eat and be satisfied. the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you.
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Wellspring of joy, through this meal you have put gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us and send us as joyful witnesses and servants that your love may bring peace and joy to the hearts of all people. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus, and may the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed, Alleluia. Go in peace, share the good news, Alleluia. Thanks be to God, Alleluia.